this is the well-known Surat Al-Qadr of the Holy Quran, chapter 97, which translates as follows. Surely we revealed it on the night of majesty. And what will make you comprehend what the night of majesty is? The night of majesty is better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend in it by the permission of their Lord for every affair. Peace it is till the rising of the morning. Chapter 97, the whole of it. And this is about what about Lala Tulkadr, which is translated variously as the night of majesty, the night of power, the night of some say destiny. But anyhow, this was the night falling in the last 10 days of Ramadan when the Holy Quran was revealed, as stated here. We revealed it on the night of the majesty. And in the last khutbah, I mentioned that the Holy Prophet wasallam himself, before his appointment as messenger of Allah, undertook rigorous devotions in the cave of Hira every year, every year for a number of years in the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan, of course, existed as a calendar month, although there was no Islam as we know it or any fasting in that month. And these devotions which he undertook included fasting for long periods of time. And even when not fasting, he was concentrating so much that he would forget to eat the food brought for him. And it was after such intense and extended spiritual exertions by the Holy Prophet, by means of prayer, pondering, reflection and fasting, that at the age of 40 years, when he was in that cave of Hira, the Quran began to be revealed to him. And that is what is meant by we revealed it on the light of the majesty on Lalatul Qadr, that its revelation began during uh, the, that night, which then became known as Lalatul Qadr. The Holy Quran was revealed to the heart of the Holy Prophet by the descent of the angels and the spirit. The same which is mentioned here, that the angels and the spirit, the spirit by that is generally taken to mean the angel Gabriel, Jibreel. And the Holy Quran itself says in another place, and surely this is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds, Rabbul Alameen, the faithful spirit, Ruhu Alameen, has brought it on your heart, on the heart of the Holy Prophet, that you may be a warner in plain Arabic language. This is chapter 26 verses near the end, 192 to 195. As the revelation of the Quran began in the month of Ramadan, therefore Islam instituted fasting in this month as a commemoration and anniversary of the revelation of the Quran. So there is a connection between fasting and the revelation of the word of God to the human heart. In case of the Holy Prophet wasallam, the Holy Quran began to be revealed to the world through him. In case of other Muslims, you can say that in the month of Ramadan, their knowledge and understanding of the Quran receives further development and progress. So in that sense, 
in Nanzal now feel a little because we revealed it on the night of the majesty applies to other Muslims as well. Those who are learning the Holy Quran, gaining knowledge from it rather than it as such being revealed to them. Now the start of something new is often marked and commemorated later on, later on as a special event even though on the day of its occurrence, nothing great or special happened, which would lead you to believe that it was going to be important in the future, that that day was going to be important in the future. And Lalat al-Qadr marks the appearance of the Holy Quran, the, the birth of the Holy Quran in the world. Although, of course, the achievements of the Holy Quran then came after that date, after that uh, date of birth. And just as Christians commemorate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, so in Islam, it's the birth of the Holy Quran, which is commemorated in the month of Ramadan before Eid al-Fitr. So just as they commemorate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, we are here before Eid al-Fitr commemorating the birth of the Holy Quran. And very often a day is celebrated because some efforts made before that day came to fruition on that date. Sometimes that is why day is commemorated that the efforts you were making before it came to fruition on that date. And the time before that date, that day, is when you actually did the work which came to fruition on that day, which you are commemorating. Now this coming of the angels on the night of every Lalatul Qadr, that certain night in the last 10 days of Ramadan, that is a spiritual experience and people perceive it. They have that spiritual experience according to how much they have striven beforehand to purify themselves and open their hearts to receive the angels. If you don't strive for it, you don't see it on its arrival. But of course, this seeing it is also a matter of degree. It does not happen that praying during just this night brings reward equal to or more than the prayers of a thousand months. A thousand months, literally, if taken literally, is 83 years. And that is close to the lifespan of a human being. If we exert ourselves throughout Ramadan, throughout a particular month of Ramadan, then by the time this Lalatul Qadr comes, we may have developed enough strength to bring about some permanent change for the good within ourselves. We may also have developed some realization of God, some realization of God in our souls, which brings us permanently near to him than we were before. So then that night of realization will be better for us than a whole life of 83 years in which there is no such realization in our hearts and no change is brought about within us. That is how that night could be better than a thousand months or 83 years or one way in which it can be. So if a person changes his or her life for the better from some point onwards in their life, from some point onwards in their life, then that is the same as changing the course of his whole life, even the life which went before it. The life which went before it then ceases to count as a life of a neglect or sin.
So to make Lalatul Qadr better than a thousand months lies in our own hands. Allah has provided the ladder, but we have to climb it to reach the top. All periods of time, period of, periods of time like a day or a night, are equal in the forgiveness that we can get from Allah and the favors we can receive from him. They are equal. What makes them more or less in their value is how earnestly we turn to God at that time and what is our own condition. Towards the end of the month of Ramadan, we should have developed a condition, an inner condition, which makes us turn our hearts fervently and passionately towards God. And it is that condition then which makes Lalatul Qadr a valuable night. Now Lalatul Qadr, it say, said here, is better than a thousand months. But still it needs to come every year. And how many Lalatul Qadrs have passed in our lives already? If we add them up, we may find that uh, all the Lalatul Qadrs that have passed in our lives taken together would be better than thousands of years if one is better than a thousand months. Then 12 would be better than 1000 years. And this Lalatul Qadr comes every year because each time it can give us a step up from what we achieved before. And there is no limit or end to the process of getting rid of our faults and of becoming better and better. Now, moving on from uh, what I've just said, saints and holy people see illumination on this night during Ramadan with their spiritual eyes, saints and holy people. Lesser people find their hearts attracted unusually strongly to prayer and to concentration during prayer and in devotion. That is an experience the lesser people have, the more ordinary people. And these angels which are mentioned, as coming in the night on the night of majesty, they act on the human heart and bring about, as is stated, bring about peace in it. Salamun Heya Hata Matlai Fajr. Now, in the biography of uh, the very great head of our uh, Jamaat, Mullah Muhammad Ali, it is related by another great elder of ours. Mr. Nasir Ahmed Farooqi, that he once asked Mawla Muhammad Ali if he had ever experienced Lalatul Qadr. And the Mawlana gave this reply, which I read out in translation. He says, yes, once I was saying the Hajjud prayers during the last 10 days of Ramadan, when I was reciting Atayyad, that is to say in the sitting uh, position, Suddenly, a very bright light appeared in the window. At first, I thought that on the road below, some people were passing carrying gas lamps. In those days, they were, uh, <clears throat> you didn't have electric torches, but people used uh, lamps powered by gas, a gas cylinder. But then I realized that no one would be in these backwoods at 3 a.m. Then I looked through the window to see what the light was and I saw that it was illuminating even the trees on the mountain far ahead. The Mala was staying in a, a mountainous region, a mountainous resort of Dalhousie in the summer month. So that's why he says it was illuminating even the trees on the mountain far ahead. 
that scene disappeared as I watched it. And then it occurred to me that it was the illumination of Lalatul Qadr that Allah had shown me. And then uh, Mr. Faruqi further writes that this uh, experience he has mentioned before was uh, probably in the 1930s. Then he further writes that once in Karachi in 1950, and that's one year before the death of Mullah Muhammad Ali, he says again during the last 10 days of Ramadan, it was the night of the 29th of Ramadan. During Tahajjud prayer, I found myself deeply engrossed and felt as if my soul was melting away at Allah's threshold. I was in the state, in such a state, that I did not want to rise up from sajda. This is uh, Mr. Faruqi writing. During uh, the Sari meal, I asked I said to Hazrat Mawla Muhammad Ali that I thought this night had been Lalatul Qadr. And he replied, I think so as well. Last night when I was saying the Isha prayer, after reciting the Fatiha, the verse in Nanzal Nahu fi Lalatul Qadr came again and again on the tip of my tongue, but I recited some other verses. And during the Hajjad prayers just now, when I was reciting the Dood, suddenly a light spread in front of my eyes. I looked up and I saw that the sky and the clouds were illuminated by this light. After a short while, this scene disappeared. And what you have to remember is that this, however, was a man who was regular in saying his Tahajjud prayers all his life. He didn't suddenly decide that this is Lalatul Qadr or these are the last 10 days of Ramadan. So I must now start to say Tahajjud prayers and do extensive devotions. He said Tahajjud prayers all his life. And once a guest staying in his house saw him in another room saying Tahajjud prayers. So the guest stood outside watching him through the door. And the guest relates that the Maulana took so long, even in his raku, even in his bowing down and his sajda, the guest says that I just got tired. I couldn't stand anymore and I had to sit down. And it is also related in the biography of Maulana Muhammad Ali that and I'll read it out in translation. Whenever anyone in his house woke at night, they would hear a melodious, wonderful sound of the Molana's heartfelt crying and supplicating, which included glorification and praise and sanctifi sanctification of the Almighty. This is the Tasbih Tamheed Tamjeed as uh, it said in Urdu and uh, Arabic. It is God alone who knows if at that time he was in this world or in another world, but his voice was like that of one who is cut off from this world and all the trappings of the world and was somewhere else, having lost himself in God and expressing before God the pain and concern in his heart. So this is how the great saints of God in Islam experienced uh, Lalatul Qadr. And there are other aspects of uh, Lalatul Qadr as well. Apart from being a night in the last days of Ramadan, Lalatul Qadr can also be considered as the entire period of the mission of the Holy Prophet Muhammad That was a Lalatul Qadr, those 23 years. It was a time of the deepest darkness, but a time in which the Holy Quran was revealed, brought down by angels. 
that the nazr wal malaika to fi wal ruha fiha bezne the bayment ko le abre which is stated about lalatul qadr that applies to the lifetime of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the angels those angels also descended on the hearts of the muslims of that time purifying them and strengthening strengthening their faith and the holy quran says about them these are there into whose hearts he has impressed faith he has stamped iman on their hearts and strengthened them with a spirit from himself with a ruh from himself chapter 58 verse 22 and at the end of this period during which the holy prophet did his work there was a dawn in the world salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr peace it is till the dawn comes or when the dawn comes there was a dawn in the world and spiritual peace in the hearts what had been disturbing and perturbing people spiritually and in their hearts the questions that had been arising had been answered to their satisfaction so there was spiritual peace in the hearts and also the muslims as individuals and as a community they made great spiritual and moral progress during the lifetime of the holy prophet people gave up evil habits bad practices wrong customs sometimes they did it in an instant when told that something was wrong and what they therefore achieved they could not have achieved any of that even in a thousand months outside the blessed period of the holy prophet and it is said that uh, anyone who found even a uh, a few hours or a day of the lifetime of the holy prophet that's better than a thousand months of their whole life without that company of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is what hazrat mirza ghulam ahmad sahab writes about that in his book one of his early books fata islam i read it in translation here god the most high says in surah al qadr and in fact not only says but he gives the good news to the believers that his word and his prophet were sent down from heaven in the lailatul qadr and he goes on to say that every reformer and mujaddid who comes from god descends during a lailatul qadr Do you know what Lalatul Qadar is? It is the name of that dark age whose blackness is total and complete. And that period, by its very nature, demands the descent of a heavenly light to dispel the darkness. And therefore, it has been metaphorically called Lalatul Qadar. But it is not, in fact, a night, one night. It is an age. it is an age which resembles the night because of its darkness and in this lailatul qadr descend the angels of god the angels of allah and the holy spirit from heaven and they accompany that reformer by the permission of the lord they accompanied not without purpose not without purpose or need but in order to reach those hearts of people which are responsive to his message and to open up the ways of peace so those angels remain busy and engaged in opening all the pathways and lifting all the veils until the darkness the darkness of neglect and indifference disappears and the dawn of guidance breaks and lastly you could say that there is in the world today 
a time of deep darkness for Islam. To the ordinary eye, the future prospects for Islam do not seem bright because there are two major evils prevailing and dominating in the world. There are the outside forces who have a wrong picture of Islam before them. And then there are the internal forces of Islam who also have a similar wrong concept of Islam as the outside forces opposing it. And it is also a period of darkness for our own movement, which faces so many dangers, so much opposition, and such serious threats of all kinds to its existence. So that's that night on the one hand. On the other hand, this night is also magnificent because light and guidance has been brought to us by angels. It has been brought to us by angels in the form, in the form of the picture of Islam presented by the elders of this movement, which we find in our literature and in the example of their lives. And our task then is to dispel the darkness and make that light which we have been granted, spread it, make it widespread in the world. May Allah enable us to do so. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim inna hu ta'ala jawadun kareemun wa lakum barru rahim Alhamdulillah نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله and now if we may recite the Darood. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barik ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa inna ka hamidu majid. That may Allah raise to a most high degree and to high ranks the dignity and status of the Holy Prophet and his true followers yeah. and make them a greatly blessed nation in the world yeah. according to the promise which he made to Abraham about Abraham and his followers and which then was transferred to the Holy Prophet and his followers. Yeah. I mean, I would also like to say in this part where we recite prayers <clears throat> that we pray to Allah that we are in this jamaat of Allah to spread the message of Islam and to implement it in our lives. On the other hand, O oh Allah, we lack resources, we are weak, we have little knowledge and also we face so much opposition and hostility. But there is a spark of sincerity in our hearts, no matter how small, a spark of sincerity in our hearts and a deep desire to carry forward our mission. But to Allah, we realize that even if we had great resources, the greatest of resources, we would not succeed except by your help. So Allah, we beseech you 
humbly we call on you, we entreat you, we plead before you to send us your help mm -hmm. to enable us to succeed in our work, our work of individual reform, mm -hmm. our work of Jamaat development, progress and improvement, mm -hmm. and our work of taking the message of Islam to the world, all the mission which we inherited from our great elders. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh Allah, I accept these prayers of ours on this blessed day of uh, Friday, the last Friday of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Amin. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam takhfir lana wa tarhamna la nukoonanna min al-khasirin. That our Lord, we have wronged our souls very greatly. And if you forgive, don't forgive us and have mercy on us, then we will be very great losers. Rabbana khfir lana zanubana. Our Lord, forgive us our sins. Rabbana khfir lana zanubana. Our Lord, forgive us our sins. Rabbana khfir lana zanubana wa israfana fi amrena. And our extravagances in our affairs. And make firm our footsteps, footsteps in our work. Grant us aid, assistance, help and victory against all sorts of forces of unbelief. And as these days again we pray for people's health. Azhibil Basa Rabbin Nasir O Lord of all people Take away illnesses, take away epidemics, take away pandemics. Azhibil Basar bin Nafi. Washfi and Shafi. Heal and you are the healer. Heal those who are ill whom we know, those whom we have in mind, those for whom we pray by name. And heal also those whom we don't know. And people in the world generally. Washfi and Shafi. La Shafi Lanta, La Shifa, La Shifa Uka. There is no healer except you. There is no healing except your healing. A healing which takes away all traces of illness. Amin. Amin. In Allah Yamuru Biladri, Walesane, Waitais al Kurba, Wayan Hanil Fashai, Wal Munkari, Wal Bag, Yaizukum Lala Kum Tazakarun. Ibad Allah uskur Allah yaskur kum wadu ho yastajib lakum Call on him and he will respond wadu ho yastajib lakum Wala zikru Allah ta'ala akbar Ikam as-salat And we now say the two raka faraz Juma prayers Allah akbar Allah akbar Ashid Allah ilaha illa Allah Ashid Allah Muhammad Rasul Allah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala mfalakat Kamat as-salah Kat kamat as-salah Allah akbar Allah akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allah akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yomidin Ia Kanabada wa Ia Kanastain Ehdina Sirat Al-Mustakim Sirat Al-Lazina Namtalehim Gare al-mahdubi alaykum wa l-azalim. Lillahi ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ath. Wa in tublum ma fi as-asakum. Lillahi ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ath. Wa in tublum ma fi anfusikum wa tukhukha yuhasibkum bihillah. فَيَقْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُزِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَلَا كُلَّ شَاءٍ قَدِيرٌ آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّنَا آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَخْدِمٍ مِنْ رَسُولِهِ وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غفرانك ربنا ولك المصير 
الله أكبر سمي الله كل من قمر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستغين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وصحا لها ما قصبت ولها ما اقتصبت ربنا لا تواخذنا إن ناسينا أخطنا ربنا ولا تخمل لنا إسرا كما خملته للذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تخملنا ما لا تاقت لنا بل وافونا وافر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين الله اكبر سمي الله لمن قمر الحمد لله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله أكبر الطيار الشذوي اللهم صل ربي جل نعيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالى يا زال جلال والإكرام استغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وتقول رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الرحمين يا حي ويا قيوم وبرحمتك استغيث وبرحمتك يا رب العالمين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفى عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين عيدهم وما خلفهم ولا يخيطون بشيء من المه إلا بما شاء 
That then is the end of the uh, Friday khutbah followed by the Fadz prayers. I hope and pray that everything uh, went well. And now we can, uh, after the program finishes, say our Turaka Sunnah prayers to complete the Yuma prayer. Eid al Fitr is on the coming Thursday, the 13th of May. So, inshallah, that is when our uh, next broadcast will be. So we hope and pray that uh, we all stay well, happy and in good spirits and complete all our fasts. Mm -hmm. Complete all our fasts successfully and achieving all that we set out to achieve and even more. Mm -hmm. So may Allah bless us and make us successful in our uh, humble efforts oh. and uh, inshallah then see you at uh, Eid al-Fitr next Thursday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.